Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, MIDI some more. Uh, I have been showing off a few MIDI tricks on my channel lately and I discovered a new trick uh, which is very very cool, it's very powerful. Uh, it takes that randomized MIDI uh, sequencing trick which uh, I've talked about before as I said uh, a little bit further and uh, it allows you to send it to multiple um, different effects uh, that can accept MIDI input. Um, so yeah, let's dive right into it. Alright, so here I have a patch, um, which is very cool. As you can see, it actually contains three uh, different tracks. We have a MIDI track, we have this other MIDI track, which is empty, uh, but serves a very important purpose. And then we finally have the track that is actually making the sound. Uh, so let's get into what it sounds first of all, and then I'll walk you through how I set it up and what the patch is actually doing. So as you can hear, we still have that randomized MIDI um, stuff we always had going on in the other patches that I talked about, and we're doing that on this MIDI track, uh, but this MIDI track doesn't actually have an instrument. And that's fairly important. As you can see, we, we are just here uh, generating uh, different notes with this randomizer and then we have the velocity uh, randomizer as well which you can then also use uh, to assign to different um, uh, uh, different parameters inside of serum now um, as you can see here we have two instances of serum we have the normal version which is generating the sound and then we have the effects version which is um, adding some more effects to it now let's quickly go over the patch. Um, it starts off like this. This is the starting sound without serum effects. Um, actually, I need to... Um, sometimes it doesn't really work. Uh, but this is the starting sound that we have. As you can see, we're using note values to um, uh, set the, the wavetable position, we are setting filter cutoff here and we're also using it um, to set another bandpass filter cutoff here at the end and in between we have some effects, uh, we have uh, this uh, delay effect with a very short delay timing we have um, this distortion unit which we're actually not only using as distortion units but also as a um, uh, uh, volume manipulator kind of thing and we've done that using the cross shaper and if we go to edit B you can see we're using a this distortion shape um, so this is above normal shapes this is a normal shape and if you go above it you start to distort and we set it up pretty high uh, almost to the maximum here and we're using that to kind of emulate the tube distortion uh, effect but a little bit higher actually uh, so that's what edit B is doing. Now if we look at edit A, what you can see is that um, from the standard version we have actually turned this second point down. Now uh, that means that all the incoming notes or incoming volume values are going to end up at zero. So we not only don't have any distortion, we actually don't have any sound when we set uh, the drive to A and which you can hear. We are not generating any sound right now. Even though this says it's doing something, it's actually not quite showing off the right thing and that's something you can use as you can see we've used this uh, 16th rate uh, to implement that which adds the distortion and if you turn it off it sounds like this so that makes it a little bit more plucky and in the, at the same time it also distorts uh, the sound which is a really neat effect now if we actually um, what I wanted to do with this patch I wanted to have it a little bit panning uh, from left and right and I couldn't really figure out how to do it inside the patch itself because if we use the pen knobs here for example on this one and this one uh, we still have this delay effect here which is going to negate that panning and I did like the sound that this particular delay effect had uh, on the sound uh, so there wasn't anything we could do inside this patch to uh, do panning on um, on this patch and make sound either on the left channel or the right channel. Uh, so we use Serum FX for that and uh, if we open up Serum FX you can see we're actually using the velocity value as our pan value here 
on a filter. Now this doesn't really work uh, the, the exact same way as um, a normal uh, pan knob will, will work where you can either go left or right. Um, I don't exactly know how it works but it doesn't just uh, take the input sound and pan it left or right. It's a little bit different than that. Um, but it does give that panning effect so that's kind of what I want. Uh, now you notice that, that that means that we need to send MIDI to two different places and normally you cannot do that. You cannot go into your uh, track, write down a MIDI clip here and uh, write down your notes and send them to the two different places, especially if you're using effects uh, to process that MIDI like we are doing here. Uh, so that's the reason why it's actually on a different track. Now you can see what's going on here is, um, first of all, this track has no output. So you can see we have set it to no output, so it's not going anywhere. Um, but what you, we can do is we can take input from it. So as you can see, both of these tracks are set to take input from our um, MIDI track here, which is number 32. Uh, so this track uses it to uh, send the MIDI to the actual instrument. And uh, that's what happens when you have an instrument on a track that's taking MIDI input, it will always send it to that instrument. And then this track, we're using that to take input from this track, which is uh, the one below here, and then sending it to our Serum FX. You can see we have uh, number 30 selected here, which is this track above here, and then we can select all the inputs from the, the Serum instant itself, or Serum FX in this case. Uh, that means that we can take the data which is generated from this thing and send it to two different places. Now this is really powerful. Um, so sometimes what people do is uh, they have two different types of these clips and then they will um, use two different clips to send them to your instrument, one to your instrument track uh, like this, for example. Let's quickly set it up. And then they will have a second instrument track here and they will have both of their effects either here um, before your thing here and they won't have this middle track and what they will do is they will just take the output and send that to your serum effects input now what this does is uh, it's a little bit different than what we had before uh, because this is going to generate different values so we're not having the same value uh, in this MIDI uh, uh, patch here than this one uh, which is something I wanted to avoid so going back to what we had just a little bit ago. Because we only use one MIDI clip and only one instance of both of these effects, we're uh, sending the same data to Serum effects as well as to Serum. And you can see that if I quickly open them up and put them side by side, um, this is going to partially go behind the camera, but it doesn't really matter. Um, if you look at the note values for both of these, you can see that they're the same, as well as for the velocity. Uh, so that's just a quick tick, uh, tip I wanted to show you. Um, it's not really anything uh, which you might use on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you have a very particular uh, desire um, for both using these randomized MIDI clips and MIDI data, uh, which I've talked about before, as well as sending that data to multiple de different destinations. Uh, you could, for example, even use this uh, to send it to multiple different sounds and kind of sequence between them, uh, which is something I also want to explore and maybe do a video on later. Uh, this is very useful. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this a uh, little bit shorter video and a little bit more uh, specialized video. You can let me know if you enjoyed it uh, by hitting the like button. I do check that. And if you really enjoy something, uh, I will ho hopefully be able to cover more on, on that topic. Uh, maybe uh, if you have a topic you would like to see, leave a comment down below. And for now, bye-bye.